From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. We are definitely going to look today at routing. How does it work? So um, the easy thing here with main stage is you just go into settings, right? You go into audio and you pick your interface. It's that simple, right? Couldn't be easier. And what's cool is that every interface these days, really for a, quite a long time, comes with a piece of software that allows you control inside the interface and for universal audio, since I'm still using their hardware for now. Um, that software, it's really kind of a plug-in, is console. And console, the way console works, console comes into your um, right in after you plug into the, the interface. So in the signal chain, it's like your cable right into the interface, and then it goes right through console. Console will allow you to adjust your gain settings, allow you to turn on and off phantom power, uh, your filter, phase, pad, etc., etc. And so what you're getting is this signal that runs through console, right? No matter what, it's going to run through console, or you can control it through console. You can add plugins if you want, but my point here is I'm trying to find an alternative to this. So I have to harness console to adjust my input settings, right, and do some stuff here. The signal goes back into main stage, but the way it works is it happens before pre-send and pre-fader. Now, if I turn the fader on, what you get is a doubled signal here, right? You get that phasey doubled signal. You don't want that. So you keep that muted. You keep that off. So we're going into console, right? Going through these four plug-in slots, which we can use, but we don't. And then we end up in main stage. So the first part is it goes right into here, this expression thing, which controls really here. Let me show you. This controls your uh, the amount of signal, right? So just keep it dimed. So this controls, this is all like a volume control, but just keep it all the way. Uh, at least that's what I do. And then you go through your plugins. It's that simple, right? Here's your fader. And so I have this sent. The way I have to have this sent out so that I can uh, utilize uh, my current setup is that I'm sending it back out into outputs 39 and 40 of my interface. Now that is really a virtual one and virtual two right here in console. And then what I'm able to do here is I'm able to use CVOX right here. And you know that CVOX is an essential part of my chain. Um, my clients do like how quiet my tracks are. I do get compliments on that and how easy they are to mix my noise-free track. So I love CVOX. This is really an important part of my VO work. Here, let me turn it off. Oh, you, did you hear that? The truck went by. So um, now you can hear it. it's really picking up the fan because, you know, you get that hash in there. So that doesn't help. That does not create a pro VO environment. So I need C-Suite CVOX in my booth to help me out. Um, I could turn the fan off, but then it gets really hot in here and uh, it's unpleasant. So uh, what do I do, right? So currently, yeah, I can use C-Suite CVOX as part of my main stage setup because I'm coming in back through outputs 39 and 40, routing that right through here and then into the output. So that works great. But again, what do I do if I don't, if I'm, let's say I'm recording uh, in a situation where I don't have my Apollo or I don't want to use my Apollo, or I'm migrating away from the Apollo, what are my noise reduction alternatives? Well, let's take a look at something. So let's, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn this off, right? Actually, let's just remove it. So look, here's the signal coming back into here, right? In order for me to control it and send it out through here. Um, but there's no noise reduction happening in console. But what I have here is a two-step solution. So. When I enable the expander here in the Amic 9099, I'm doing most of the heavy lifting right here, right? So you can hear there's some tails on there, right? When I talk, if you have headphones on, it's a lot easier to hear. So at the end of each, <laughs> when my voice tails off, you can hear the noise before the expander kind of shuts it down. And I can really adjust this so that the perception of noise is minimal but sometimes you run into trouble where you know if you get it too tight to really get that noise floor down you you, you run the risk of it sounding unnatural so i like to keep my release over here mom um, i like with the tail it's fine because i'm going to use burdum denoiser pro to kill the rest of it now burdum denoiser pro is pretty cool and you could you could really you could turn off the expander and really 
you know, dime all these controls out and get it to sound like zero noise floor. But I find that it's it gets a little artifacty. I'm not really crazy about that. So I just lean on it a little bit to clean it up. And I get this nice, beautiful bliss. Okay? It works. So as I'm exploring more options, I'm really trying to get this all dialed in. But as I'm exploring more options, this definitely seems to work uh, as a substitute for CVOX. And I know that some of you were concerned about that. Some of you who also use CVOX were wondering when we were talking, um, we were talking a while ago about uh, what would you do without it or what, what are, you, are your noise reduction alternatives? And Burdum Denoiser is also a zero latency plugin. So all of this right here, I am cutting through live zero latency in the same way that I would use in Apollo, but I'm not using DSP. These are all native plugins and I'm getting really what I feel is a pretty great result. But Nation, I want to know what you're thinking. As we continue to look at main stage, I'm liking it more and more and more. Microphone Assassin Nation. What do you think of main stage so far? I'm digging it. And again, you know what? I know the main stage is just an OSX kind of thing. And I'm not trying to be a Mac snob or anything like that, but this works for me. I like this. And I know that there are alternatives that you can be using for Windows, whether it's Ableton or whether it's a Gig Performer, which is a plugin host. Um, there are options out there that you can use that are not Apollo, that are definitely more cost effective. Again, this was 25 bucks. This was what, $49 on sale and these two were free. So, and uh, main stage is 30 bucks. So, you know, you do the math. I know. I, I, I Nobody said there was going to be math. My fault. All right. You know what to do. Leave a comment. Until next time, Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.